So um, you may wonder who's hungry, um, since we've been talking so much about, you know, what we know about nutrition and we just know so much about what it is to be healthy and how to stay healthy. And you can see in this table, it's from your book or this map, really, that um, uh, undernourished uh, population is who we would say is hungry. And undernourished means uh, not only are they malnourished, but they're undernourished, which means they don't get enough calories um, each day. And the countries that are in the kind of the manila color, uh, those countries are fine. Um, it's not a, a high percentage of um, undernourished people. And then the darker the color, um, the higher the percentage of the undernourished population, all the way up to this sort of maroon color, which is greater than 50% of the population is undernourished. And you can see it's quite evident when you look at a map like this, where in the world are people undernourished in its sub-Saharan Africa, okay? And so, um, as it turns out, in the 2005, um, the United, a, a report from the United Nations said that 852 million people in the world were undernourished. Okay, 852 million people in the world are undernourished. That means they're not getting enough food each day. And um, if you compare that to the population in the United States, um, the most recent data I could find is that there's about 307 million people in the United States. And when you think about the fact that 50% of our population is overweight, whereas two and a half times our population of people are undernourished in the world, it's just staggering um, to think about that. And so how could this be that we have plenty of food, so much extra corn and wheat that it just piles up in the United States, but, um, but, but there's still people hungry in the world? And it's because the food supply is not equally distributed worldwide. Okay, so you may ask yourself, well, why is this the case? Why are there still people hungry in the world um, in the 21st century? Well, there's several factors. Um, one is geography. Oops, geography and climate. There are certain parts of the world that just the the ground is not good for growing food, and so. Um, you know, they're not growing enough food in these areas to feed their own populations. So that's one basic problem. They don't grow enough food. Um, another problem to add to that is in certain places there have been prolonged droughts. Okay, so there's, if they could grow the food, there's not enough water to keep the food alive. And also in some places there's been floods that have wiped out <clears throat> the fertile um, <clears throat> ground. Another reason why people are hungry is due to economic reasons. Um, <clears throat> the, in these places, their local populations don't have any money base, and so they can't afford fertilizer, which would increase crop yields to have extra food. So fertilizer is too expensive in some regions of the world. Um, the farm animals and equipment are too expensive to buy for these people, okay? And um, <clears throat> another problem is um, civil unrest. People can't get along. And so because of that, even if food is brought to the area, the food distribution is blocked. Okay, so even if the people have all kinds of problems with their food distribution, <clears throat> you know, problems with the weather or um, not enough money, and then other parts of the world might try to ship extra food there, but then the food distribution is blocked because people can't get along. And then the last reason is disease. Um, the people who don't have fertilizer also don't have enough money for herbicides, so there can be crop diseases, and there can also disease in the populations, for example, HIV AIDS. And then a lot of the adults um, <clears throat> are too sick to work. So there's just all kinds of issues that lead to this uh, fact that um, there are still hungry people in the world, despite all of our advances. Now, um, things have gotten better so it's not all bleak. Um, this uh, <clears throat> histogram shows 
the places where it's getting better. Um, and part of the reason why is is um, just global grain and cereal production has has doubled over the past 25 years. So you know um, cultures recognized that they were not feeding their people, and um, the grain production has increased. Uh, other types of food supplies have increased. So there's been effort to to make more food. Um, the region that's done the best is the Asia and the Pacific, <clears throat> going from 40% um, <clears throat> um, of undernourished all the way down to about 18%. So they've made the best strides in increasing their crop yields and um, taking care of their people. So most places you can see have improved. Developing countries in general have improved. Uh, Latin America and the Caribbean you know, has improved. Near East and North Africa has improved quite a bit, but you can see the one place in the world that has not improved over the last 40 years is Sub-Saharan Africa. And it's due to these lingering um, problems with just civil unrest, the land isn't good, um, and people are sick. So it's, it's a real problem, and it's a, been a focus um, of the United Nations and other countries to try to get things better there, but it's, it's, a, it's a big, big problem. Okay.